Hi, welcome back to another video. In this video, we'll be looking at 17C. So this exercise is actually very similar to the previous one. So feel free to watch the previous videos first. Um, and so in this exercise, we're considering x to the power of n, where n is a negative integer. But you'll soon see that we're using the same method and the rule is the same as well. So we see negative powers quite often actually. Um, in hyperbolas, for example, we know it's 1 over um, x, and this can be written as x to the power of negative 1. So that's x with a negative power. And also in truncuses, um, so it's 1 over x squared. And we know that this is x to the power of negative 2. Again, it's x with a negative power. So this is why we define the domain to be any real numbers except zero. So x values cannot be zero because the denominators cannot be zero. All right, so before we use the first principle to obtain the derivative function when the powers were positive integers, and now let's use the first principle again and find the derivative when the power is a negative integer. So there are two examples in the textbook and I chose the second example. So they're essentially the same in terms of method. So I thought I'll, um, I thought we'll look at the second example. And of course, I strongly encourage you to have a go at example 14 in your own time. So we have these two points on our curve, point P and Q. We know their coordinates and there is a line that passes through the two points. So clearly we're finding the gradient of the second line in this question. Okay, so the gradient of PQ is essentially rise over run, um, the changing y over changing x. We know the two coordinates. So it's simply x plus h to the power of negative 3 minus x to the power of negative 3 over x plus h minus x. Um, and the denominator is simply h because plus x minus x, they cancel out nicely. So it's all over h. Okay, I'll continue here. So this fraction can be written as uh, the numerator x plus h to the power of negative 3 minus x to the power of negative 3. This whole thing uh, divided by h. And we know that dividing by h means we are multiplying by its reciprocal, which is times by 1 over h. And in the brackets, we know we can rewrite using fractions. So x plus h to the power of negative 3 can be written as 1 over x plus h cubed. And minus x to the power of negative 3 can be written as 1 over x cubed. So this whole thing times 1 over h. And we know that we can only subtract two fractions when the denominators are the same. So I'm going to multiply x cubed to the first fraction and multiply x plus h cubed to the second fraction. And now I have x plus h cubed times x cubed and for the numerator, I have x cubed minus x plus h cubed times 1 over h. So if you expand this directly, it's going to be x cubed plus um, 3x squared h plus 3x h squared plus h cubed. Or this can be rewritten as x plus h times um, a quadratic, so x plus h squared. Um, but in the second case, you will have to expand twice. So in order to save time, we're going to use the first one. Okay, so it's x cubed minus, I'll still keep the brackets because we have a negative sign in front, um, x cubed plus 3x squared h plus 3x h squared plus h cubed and everything over, I'm going to keep the denominator for now, times 1 over h. Um, expand the brackets, we have x cubed minus, so everything will become the opposite, minus and minus, all over x plus h cubed times x cubed times 1 over h. All right, let me continue up here. All right, so x cubed minus x cubed, they cancel out nicely. And we're left with negative 3x squared h minus 3xh squared 
minus h cubed all over x plus h cubed times x cubed. And we still have the 1 over h. Now, in the numerator, all the terms have h in them. So that means we can cross multiply because we have an h in the, um, in the denominator there. All right, so that's gone and we're left with h to the power of 1 and that becomes h squared. So let me rewrite again. Now we have negative 3x squared. Now h is gone minus 3xh minus h squared all over x plus h cubed times x cubed. And now... Let me scroll down. Um, to find the gradient of the curve at P, it's essentially finding the limit of this expression as H approaches zero. So when H goes to zero, this term goes to zero, and this term goes to zero, and H goes to zero. And we're left with, so negative three X squared um, over X cubed times X cubed. So we then have negative 3x cubed over, um, so index law, it's x to the power of 3 plus 3, which is 6. Okay, according to index law, this is equal to x squared divided by x to the power of 6, which is x to the power of 2 minus 6, which is x to the power of negative 4. Um, and finally, the answer is negative 3x to the power of negative 4. So we can say that, sorry, it's a little messy. Um, the derivative function f prime of x is equal to negative three x to the power of negative four. So as you can see, using the first principle, we can find the derivative, but it's quite time consuming and complicated and you can make mistakes easily. So do we have a general rule? Yes, we do. and. Um, in fact, it's very similar to the previous one. It's just that now the power becomes negative. So when the function is x to the power of n, where n is a negative integer, still to find the derivative, we bring the power to the front and then reduce the power by 1. And of course, we know that when a function is a constant, the derivative will always be 0. And when n is positive, we take the domain of f to be any real number. When we have a negative power, we have to exclude 0. All right, let's have a go at these questions. So if we define this function to be f of x, then f prime of x will be, we bring down the power, reduce the power by 1, and we bring down the power, so this becomes negative 2 times negative 3 x to the power of negative 3 minus 1 equals negative 4. Um, then it's plus, but we're going to bring down the negative 1 and reduce the power by 1 becomes negative 2. And the 2 simply disappears because that's a constant. Okay, let's simplify. So 4x cubed plus 6x to the power of negative 4 minus x to the power of negative 2. Okay. And we know that x can't equal to 0. Alright, next example. Remember, x cannot be 0 because we have negative power here. Alright, so the derivative function f prime of x is we bring down the power. So 3 times 2 equals 6. And x to the power of 2 minus 1 equals 1. Minus 6 times the power and reduce the power by 1. And then the plus one term disappears because that's a constant. Simplify, we have 6x plus 12x to the power of negative 3. All right, so now we want to find the gradient of the tangent to the curve at this point. But the first step is always to find the derivative function. Um, so the derivative function, we can rewrite. Well, let's rewrite first. So f of x is equal to x squared plus x to the power of negative 1. Find the derivative function, bring down the power, reduce the power by 1, bring down the power, so it's negative 1, times x to the power of negative 1 minus 1. And that becomes x to the power of negative 2. And the gradient of the tangent at this point 
means that we need to take the x value. So if we sub um, x equals 1 into the derivative function, we have 2 times 1 minus 1 to the power of negative 2. The answer is, so um, I guess you can also write this as 2x minus 1 over x squared. And that's easier. So 1 over um, x squared is simply 1 squared. Um, so it's 2 minus 1. The answer is 1. This means the gradient of the curve is 1 at the point 1, 2. Okay. All right. Last question. Uh, show the derivative of the function is always negative. So let's find the derivative first f prime of x is equal to we bring down the power and reduce the power by 1. So that becomes negative 3x to the power of negative 4. Uh, we can also write this as negative 3 times 1 over x to the power of 4. And this is negative 3 over x um, to the power of 4. So we know that x to the power of 4 will always be greater than 0 because x cannot be 0, um, and it doesn't matter what value x take, it can be a negative or a positive number, but x to the power 4 will always be a positive number, and a negative number, negative 3, divided by a positive number, so negative divided by positive, the answer is still negative, so that's why the derivative of this function is always negative. All right, I hope you find this video helpful, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!